here. We'll email them a copy. Uh, so, uh, student response systems. Um, we're going to quickly look at uh, the system we've chose to use. We'll talk about a couple other systems uh, and how it works. Uh, we'll look at how uh, your students would be answering these questions and uh, the benefits to you, uh, some best practices. We'll also look at, um, uh, at how to actually use Poll Everywhere itself. So, uh, students response systems, basically anything that allows students to respond real time to the instructor in class. Okay, so what's going on in the students' brains is, is what we're looking for here. Uh, so some people use this for attendance, uh, to start off discussions, for to evaluate uh, uh, course content or concept comprehension, or uh, understanding the, the classroom dynamics of how students are feeling about a specific thing. Uh, the, big, the big one is contingent teaching. So do my students understand this? Am I going to decide to, to go back and, and cover something again, or am I going to uh, continue on and, and give them supplementary material in some other way? Uh, back channel communications is also a big one. I have a little Twitter symbol up here because any feedback you can get from the students other than their, their blank stares or their smiles or their sneers, um, it can, can help you really understand what's going on in the class. So uh, in online classes, it's, it's easy. There's usually a chat window down the side. You can see what's going on. You can also set up PowerPoint so you can have your Twitter feed down the side as well. So students could be live tweeting what's going on. You can sort of understand what they're, what they're, what they're interested in, what they're saying. now. Any, they can put anything up there, so you got to take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, Poll Everywhere, the, the thing we'll be looking at, has uh, some privacy filters on it and some um, language filters on it, so people can't use uh, rude language. That being said, uh, kids are pretty inventive, so uh, you got to make sure the maturity level is going to be right for the, for the type of questions you're going to be using. So, uh, have you ever used a student response system before? So put up one hand for, for yes, left hand for yes, right hand for no, and both hands for a little. Okay, so everyone's done this before. Some people use a more, more covert one, two, three to try and get the, the shyer people to, to stand up in class with that. You don't need the technology. You can do it just by raising hands and stuff. It, it's just about engaging the class and trying to figure out what's going on in their head. So uh, as we were talking about a bit before here, we used to use Turning Point, uh, which these sort of physical clickers. We've moved to a different version. Uh, it's called Poll Everywhere. It's, it's the big one in the middle. Uh, it was the most, um, it was the best price for the university and it had uh, some great features and it was growing really quickly. Uh, and they've just been, they've been really fabulous on the, the support side. There's a whole host of other tools. Uh, the majority of them are sort of a freemium. So you can use them up until say like 50, 60 respondents uh, and then it costs you money after that. So by all means, uh, Anything we're talking about here today, except for when we're actually looking at Poll Everywhere specifically, will apply to, to any system. And there's a lot of other great systems. Some people love uh, Kahoot's a big one. It's a little more, uh, makes it a little more game-based. Um, Top Hat Monocle is super pushy. You've probably actually gotten several emails from them. They've been emailing instructors uh, directly. Their, um, their pricing models aren't great for students, uh, so I, I don't, um, and just the tack they've taken with us and the instructors, I, I kind of recommend not using them, although some people uh, have had great success with them. So there's a lot of tools out there. We've decided to go to Poll Everywhere, strictly a pricing thing. So it's free for anyone at Carleton to use. It's free for instructors. It's free for students. Right now, Carleton has a blanket license for the entire university. So all you have to do to get added to that is send me an email, uh, and then you'll uh, You'll, you'll join Carlton Carlton's license with if you already have a log on or if you make a new one, um, and then students don't pay for anything. We're for the foreseeable future. We're still covering this for so for at least uh, another 16 months. We'll be we'll be covering the cost of this. Um, I'm still trying to make a justification case to the university that this should be uh, adopted at a, at a larger level, but it's it's getting more and more expensive the, the more and more people tend to use it. Uh, but their their pricing model is still. Uh, very appropriate and we still have a bit of room to grow. We're, we're growing incrementally but it's still uh, relatively relatively cheap as well. Okay, so how does it work? You ask a question, students answer, uh, and since there's no physical clickers, students answer on the web, uh, so either on a laptop, on a smartphone, or via a text message. So even if they don't have a smartphone, uh, you can answer via a text message. Uh, step three, you see the results on, on, the, on the slide that you look at. So, um, it's 
very, it's sort of a three-step process for, for integrating into your class. You want to talk to the students about what's going on, why you're doing this. Uh, the example's a bit dated, but um, it's, uh, it's like on American Idol or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So these, these shows are kind of a little old now. I there's not the sort of the student response uh, game shows aren't really popular anymore. But you can explain to them sort of why you're using it, why it's going to be beneficial, mention that you're trying it out, and, and then get feedback from them along the way to see if, if they're enjoying this as well, um, and let them know how, it, how it's going to work. We also have some standardized language that you can email out or, or put into your, your course outline as well. So this is, this is sort of what it looks like. So for web voting, uh, either on a, a smartphone a browser or on a laptop, it looks like that. And then on the right hand side is texting. So you text to a, a number. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit later, but it's a Canadian number. Uh, so the, most people have unlimited texting plans, but if they don't, um, ideally they can use the web. We're still trying to find out, uh, it hasn't been a case yet that uh, a student that has really wanted to participate hasn't had a device. So device saturation tends to be above 99% uh, for students at Carleton University. Um, and if there's a specific case where a student doesn't have access, you can borrow a laptop from the, uh, from the library or there's other models that we're, we're looking at as well to try and get some old smartphones that would just be web enabled that the student could borrow from, from this semester or something like that. Okay, so let's give it a try. Uh, so if you have a device or phone, uh, pull it out. If you don't, uh, there's a laptop here that you're, you're more than welcome to use. Um, so we're going to go to either go to Ryan K, pollev.com, Ryan K. Ryan K. Or is anyone texting in here? Okay. You're trying to text, so you see the numbers that work for you. You try. Okay. So you have to. You have to. Yeah, just enter a number. It's working. Uh, mm -hmm. for texting. Yeah. Or. Yeah, for texting. For texting, you have to text Ryan K to this number. Okay, so just thirty-seven six zero seven. Thirty-seven six zero seven, and then you have to decide A, B, or C. So you send a you send one message to join via text message, and then you send a second message to actually answer. But you only have to join once per per session, per session or per semester, depending. Because um, uh, if the students have a few instructors that are using it, they're going to need to shift it or, or change it. Uh, most students will download the app after the first time they use it. Um, and if they have an app, it'll, it'll save their instructors' sort of websites and groups. Okay, so. Ryan, I'm sorry to yeah. Is there a way to see the numbers behind the percentages? Absolutely. So uh, in the settings, you can decide. Uh, we'll have a look at the settings in a, in a bit. Okay. You can't change it uh, live right here, but you can, you can decide where you see percentages or actual numbers. So actual numbers probably would have been a lot more helpful in this place and because right now I have no idea how many people actually responded, right? right. That's the nice thing about clickers, uh, that the turning point clickers, you see like 36 people responded and you, you kind of have a sense of how many people in the room so you know mm -hmm. when the polling sort of sort of done, right? And, and Ryan, the, the last thing you click, that's the one that's saved, right? The last thing you click, that's you the one that's saved. Mind, the so you can decide to let people change their mind or not. So when you're setting oh, up when you're setting up the you poll, decided not. and I decided not, yeah. you're you're locked in. <clears throat> you, oh, just like rock, paper, okay. scissors, your first gut instinct is what you have to what you have to go with. So you have to you have oh, to I, you can change you can change the visual settings yeah. actually. So instead of percentage, let's look at count. Okay. Oh, that's so yeah, so this is there's there's a little toolbar uh, when you when you have this up, it's a little toolbar and you can change the visual settings on the fly. So maybe we wanted it to look like that or like this. Is that the same as Sorry. So first we three seven six and then what happens? And then you have to also text A, B, or C after that. So you join one, you text once to join sort of Ryan's session, and then you text again for it to. Uh, okay, because I, I tried that and it didn't work, so I just repeated it. That's why I was double 
Awesome. Yep. Um, okay, so underneath the visual settings, this just lets uh, this lets you know that the poll is active. This next one would hide results. So maybe I didn't want people to be swayed by what other yeah. people were choosing. You can hide the results and then decide to show them after. Uh, you can also lock the poll. So if I lock this, then no one else would be able to add any new entries. Uh, you can clear the poll. Uh, so I can re-poll people. Maybe we took a poll. Uh, we had a discussion and then we re-poll the audience to see what they thought. We, we can see what uh, what's going on. Uh, and then you, if you have set a correct answer, uh, you can also do that as well. So rock beats everything. Come on, paper's not going to beat rock. So you can, if there's a correct answer, you can set a correct answer. The nice thing about setting a correct answer is uh, you can run reports of this after and then share the report with the student. Uh, of of uh, You can take out how people responded, but you can quickly make them a list of here are the practice questions we did. Uh, and a lot of times, one of those practice questions may show, show up on a test or, or an exam. So. Um, students that answer questions in class uh, that show up on the test tend to do much, much better, even if they are slightly altered, obviously. Okay. Questions, concerns about the first poll? There's some people that still have scrunchy face that didn't really. Okay. Did you? Hold on. Hold on. I can so I can change it because it tells me you can text clear or undo, and I was able to click yeah, clear, you can send clear, and then undo. You can unchange, you can undo. Oh, I joined. Sorry. You're, no, you joined Ryan now. There's a way to... Does it let you right away? It says you can't, but if you text clear or There's a way to... Yeah. Okay, so you can lock it. You don't have to lock it. It's going to wait until... Yeah, Frank? So is the number 37607 global for Carlton? And then by joining Ryan... No, so my, account, my account it always has the exact same number. Okay. So uh, it's going to be the same for the, for the rest of the year for, for any student. So if they already have a, they've already texted that number, they can just pull it up in their the recent text and, and text again. Yeah, it's it's the same for any instructors. And uh, this poll, uh, I can give you some of this stuff. So a lot of people will just will put this slide in there and we'll just update the the name and then the number that goes along with it. Okay, we'll see how that works for Eileen. Did you get it right? <laughs> there you go. No, I didn't. I went with paper. <laughs> so, I guess. So that there's a whole host of different types of questions you can ask on Poll Everywhere. Um, for the texting option, there's really only the um, um, the free response, uh, which which there's a couple different ways they do free response now, and we'll have a look at one of the other ones. One of them is a word cloud. So uh, when people text stuff. The, the larger, the more people text the same word, the, the larger that word gets. And then multiple choice uh, and true false. So clickable images and, and Q&A or ranking type polls, you can't really do uh, with texting. It just doesn't work. They're looking at ways around that, but the, it just doesn't work as well. So be mindful of the audience. You, you could ask students, are you using a mobile device or, or, a, uh, or, or are you texting? Uh, to answer the questions and you, you sort of know the demographic that you're, you're trying to make questions for. Um, so you can make, as I was saying, you can make clickable images. So you could say, you know, like point to uh, the femur in a, in a picture of a body or point to Texas on a map of, of the U.S. or, or whatever your subject matter might be. Uh, Q&A polls, uh, there's a couple different types. There's, way, there's one that's ranking, so rank these in order uh, of what you'd like to talk about next or of, of projects you, you, that we should do in class or uh, uh, in the order that things should happen. So first they're supposed to do, you know, like uh, 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 thesis, then they're supposed to do this, they're supposed to do that, so you could, you could let students rank order stuff in that way. You can also do a, a question and answer. People can suggest things, and then people would vote on those suggestions. So uh, you get ideas from the class, and then the class also ranks them. So then um, uh, the students have a lot of input to, to sort of what, what you're being talked about. Other options? Yeah? At this moment, it's anonymous for, for you. You don't know who we are. Right now, it's completely anonymous for me. I don't know who you are. But there is a way for me. To there is there is a way to do that, and uh, and we'll we'll definitely look at that, and we'll talk more about anonymous and and, and tracking participation too. It's uh, yeah. Uh, so you can have image responses, you can have uh, latex syntax, but sometimes apparently uh, some of the syntax. Queen, 
doesn't work. Itself. Only in the question in itself. The, in the, in the items oh, okay. Fine. So yeah, so you can put math down here, but you can't put math in the title apparently. Um, you can, but there are certain tags that won't work. So there's certain things you can't do. Okay. So some things you can't do, uh, but there are some things you can do. Uh, there is also foreign language support. So if you're teaching uh, in a language program, uh, there's uh, 100 something. Which one is your favorite? What is your favorite book? Oh, is that what it says? War and Peace. No, yeah. it says uh, Spider Man, Incredible Hulk. They really. And the they really have a, uh, a superhero theme going on here. So, <laughs> concerns and benefits. Um, what do you think the possible benefits are? So this is one of those open-ended questions. So you can type anything you want to. So what's the potential benefit of, of using this in class? So depending on, on how you have your settings set up, this might show up as a word cloud. You can have it show up as a <laughs> So apparently engagement is very important uh, to, to, people, to people in this room. Uh, so you can have it show up as a ticker. You can have it show up more like a, a, a Facebook wall. <laughs> Uh, so this one sort of runs down and then the, the ones fall off the bottom of the page. There's a couple other viewing options that we can look at that sort of stitches them together or keeps them rolling through the screen or, or, or whatnot. So this is uh, just another type of, of open-ended question where you can get other responses. And all of these are stored as well. So every response is stored for you. So uh, even just sharing this with the students after, you can, you can uh, use this in a, in a whole host of different ways. Um, Oh, just one more, sorry. Go for checking understanding, immediate feedback, co-op their technology. Uh, yeah, so in the in the intro slide, you may want to mention the students, okay, get your devices out, but make sure the ringer's <laughs> off. Make sure the ringer's off. Uh, uh, people really like this, okay. Okay, so some concerns. Uh, it's, an, it's, an, it's an effort to learn the technology. If you've been using something before, you have to uh, convert your questions into this new format, although uh, they've just updated the way that you can, you can import things uh, from, a, from a spreadsheet. Um, uh, and it actually works quite well. I gave it a test. Uh, so there's, there is a way to get questions in quickly other than just copying and pasting. Um, there's the effort of using it effectively. So if you're if you're new to polling in the classroom, um, there is a bit of a learning curve to to make sure that you're getting and your students are getting benefit out, out of using these questions. Uh, we do have a multiple choice question workshop, uh, and uh, I'm working with uh, another person here that we're gonna we're gonna do a, a polling workshop on different types of questions later on uh, in the summer at some point. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that's that's most important. The hardest part is uh, getting the right questions to use with your students. Uh, the cost of students free, maybe texting. Uh, most people have unlimited texting now, or the number of texts that, that you're going to be giving in class is. is you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk about pacing a little bit later, but it, there might be 10, 10 a class, so that's not going to blow their their budget for uh, for texting. Um, low participation, device saturation. So uh, in, in classes that use this anonymously, we tend to see uh, anywhere between 50 and, and 80, 90 percent people involved in it. Some people don't want to. Some people think it's, uh, it's a little bit catchy and they'll, they'll get on and, and want to do it. Um, again, getting back to uh, is it anonymous? Are you tracking participation? Um, they seem to have the most benefit when it's anonymous and they choose to, to co-opt in. Now, a lot of people use this for participation marks or for attendance or for, for other small quizzes or assessments in the class. Um, it can definitely work for that. It, uh, it's a little bit more work to set up uh, initially because we have to have the students register for your class and register for an account so that we know who they are. Um, and at present, there isn't a plug-in that'll just push the grades right to see you learn, although that's coming in the next half a year or two years at the, at the most. 
um, but you can still run a report and get that information out and, and bring it in to see you learn and uh, we don't have instructions on the website for that yet but there will be there in the next week or two uh, so some benefits. The ability to check and reinforce course teaching allows uh, anonymity. Uh, everyone has the, the quiet kids and, and the loud kids that want to talk at every, that raise their hand initially for every single question and, and sort of dominate the class, uh, which, which sort of shuts them out mouths of a lot of other students. So we really want to get those, those quieter students to participate uh, and to sort of put the money where their mouth is and, and actually be thinking critically during class about, about answers and realizing that they either do or don't know the material. Uh, more chances for formative assessment. So formative assessment is a big one. The, usually the only time we test students is during uh, an, an exam or, or a quiz uh, and then they, they, so they never have a chance to fail. Uh, and Learning is, is all about giving them a chance to fail and getting something realized or getting something wrong and then, and then getting a chance to correct that. So. Uh, it's really nice to give these in class so students sort of know uh, where they're at against the rest of the, the students as well, but it gives, uh, gives students a chance to fail without any sort of large consequence. Uh, you really understand what you, your class knows, so again, back to that contingent teaching sort of thing, you can decide, okay, I just spent an hour going over a concept, we ask the students if they understand it, they really don't understand it, but you still have to cover all this other content, so, so what do you do? Do you just ignore it? Do you put supplementary material up? Do you go over, do you go back over the question and, and try and identify where the issues were um, and cut something maybe else out of the course or make something else supplementary? Um, so they're saying it's a reality check for students. If, if they're the only one that got it wrong, they're just like, oh, 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 like everyone else knows something I don't, I really better pick up my boots and, and try and understand this. Uh, there are a lot of research studies that, that will show that it does improve uh, retention and learning. Uh, up to four months later, quiz, quiz interactions from class will potentially still be memorable. Um, Re-energizes class, it just breaks up the modality, it keeps people more engaged. Uh, somebody was saying it keeps use uh, co-op their technology so they're, they're already using their phones or if they're doing something else that might draw them back in into what's going on with the class. Okay, ways to use it. Um, there are four larger categories, and they have a breakdown of uh, five or six sort of other ways. This is sort of very top level. In general, uh, it's used to uh, enhance or start or guide discussions. So what do you people think about X? Okay, we can have a discussion about it, and then we can pull the class again and see what people think about that discussion. Um, so survey opinions on controversial topics where you couldn't really do it in hand. So like, you know, are you, are you pro and con euthanasia? So that could potentially be uh, a very uh, heated debate and you might not want to sort of out somebody. So if you're talking about things in class that uh, are potentially close to the vest for a lot of people, uh, you can still get anonymous information, information back from your students and, and, uh, and then talk about how the students feel about, about something or what their opinions on a certain topic might be. Uh, I back again to contingent teaching. So, um, um, have they have they done the homework from from last week? Did they understand the homework from last week? Uh, are they understanding the material that we're doing now, or did they understand the material that we did uh, cover in the class today? Uh, so, assessment again. You can track participation or attendance. Uh, think about keeping it anonymous. Uh, the majority of people tend to keep it anonymous, but um, there there is benefit of, of having the students sort of uh, buy into it and. and if you're going to use it consistently uh, throughout the term, then it might be a good way to assign participation marks mm -hmm. if that's something that's that's important to you. Ryan, question: Can you yeah. use it both ways? Uh, like, there's times when I want to use it to actually gauge participation. I want to see who's responding, but there are times I want I want an honest feedback. And and when I move from one to the other, how do the students trust me mm -hmm. that is truly anonymous? Yeah, I'll have to check. So when you're tracking participation, you have the student. The students have to make an account with the system and then it recognizes a name and phone number. And you can not require students to be logged in, but I don't know if you can force it to be anonymous. I'll have to... Because that's one thing, the turning point that allowed me to do this, there was, there was a little mm -hmm. button that allowed me to do anonymous yeah. uh, poll in. The students would see it. Because they have to trust you, right? Yeah. You may say it's anonymous, but I'm really tracking you guys. Yeah. Um, okay. I have anything to write it down, but one of my colleagues will keep me honest. I'll send you an email. Yeah, that's Perfect. So I don't know, but we'll find out. Um, 
you can do. It seems to me yeah. that you can do that in a question. There's a setting in the question that. What he means is going from uh, one yeah. question that is yeah. once, once you know you, and then switching to so the next. So once you've got your students logged in, right, like to do the attendance, you don't want to say, okay, now log, log in. out and, and yeah, well, you, you don't, don't want to do it that way because that. they'll never get logged in again. So yeah, we'll look okay. in, in yeah. the settings a little bit. We'll have a look at the, the settings when we're logged into Poll Everywhere and then we'll, uh, we'll find out. Uh, peer interactions. People are using this for, for sort of think pair shares as well. So you ask the students a question, you, you get them to respond, and send them off in, in groups to discuss their potential answer, and then bring them back to, to respond as well. So this is a little bit of an old um, uh, flowchart, but it also just another way to sort of look at how, what can you do. So you can improve student engagement, you can teach, uh, so the meeting objectives, not meeting objectives, what sort of remediation are you going to do. Uh, is it facilitating student learning? Uh, is it going to reinforce uh, a point? Um, are you evaluating them? Or are you collecting information about them or on them? So uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to look at more ways to use uh, the tool? Do you want to look at some best practices from, from previous instructors? Or do you want to look, take a tour of, of pull everywhere the actual application? And depending on what we have time to, we'll just circle back to, to some of these other things. Can you go to can you go to the count here so I have a better idea of what uh, how many people are responding? Okay, so let's go have a look at poll everywhere. All right, so I'll log in here. So it's just uh, polleverywhere.com, and I'll email you that link when you sign up as well. And then you log in. Carlton credentials? Uh, not Carlton credentials yet, uh, but it has to be your Carlton email address. And that's just for me to make sure that everyone who's using this is actually affiliated with Carlton in some way. So I can look down the list. And... Sorry, Ryan, I have a question. Yes. Uh, logging in. Yes. Do we need to contact you? You, yes, so um, just send me an email and I'll, I'll put my email address up at the, the end and then uh, I'll send you the lo uh, login information and add you to the list where it's not going to cost you anything to get all the features I want. Okay, so this is what it, this is what it looks like. Um, up at the top we have our polls, we have our participants, and we have our reports. You can create a poll or you can import a poll. Uh, you see any previous polls that you've made here. You can see who's responded to it. You can see which one is active. So this one right now is active. Um, you can download the slides in PowerPoint or Google Slides or, or Keynote. For PowerPoint itself, uh, we'll have a, a look, but you need to, there's, a, there's an add-on that you need for PowerPoint. It's already installed in every single classroom. It's ready to go. It works, but you do have to log in. It's so on uh, It does work on Mac, actually. Uh, so let's just have a look at here. Anyway, so there's a new tab that shows up. It's called Poll Everywhere, and you just have to log in. Uh, and then you can add slides that you already have. You can make a new slide, or you can insert slides that, that you already have. Um, you can also, from the website, just download the specific slides uh, as PowerPoint slides. <coughs> okay. Is the add-on available for download for other computers? Yes, so it, it's a completely free to download it. So ideally, you want it at home so you can practice it, sure. try it out, and then it, it's already installed in every classroom, so you don't have to, to worry about it, and it's updated several times a year to make sure it's uh, working currently. So let's create a poll. We'll click create up here on the top left. So we see the different types of questions I have. There's a multiple choice question, there's a word cloud question, uh, a question and answer question, a rank order question, clickable image, um, survey, and survey is relatively new. I haven't had a chance to play with it just because we've been busy around here, but it's uh, sort of a everything for poll everywhere it's live. There's only one active question at a time and it's only active when you're showing it. Um, the surveys you can create uh, are sort of offline surveys so they can be done at any time. Um, 
and then you can send a link out to students to do that. So it's just another way of quizzing or polling or, or asking students questions. Um, but I haven't haven't played with it much yet. The other option here is is open ended. Uh, so that was sort of the, like one of the options that uh, when people were, were looking at student engagement. It's, uh, some options on this about how people see it. Okay, so for every slide we have how can people respond? Can they respond via the website? Can they respond via text messaging? Uh, can they respond via Twitter? Uh, each person may, may respond up to once, as many times as they like. Make it anonymous, so there you go. This applies to past, present, and future responses for this poll. There you go. Who can respond? Everybody or just registered users? Uh, custom reply message, so you can be like, oh, thank you for replying to this poll. <laughs> or, or the correct answer was, um, you can schedule lock and, and unlock times. Uh, but as I was saying, for the most part, um, it, whatever's act, the last one that's active is what, what you're seeing. And uh, moderation, so for example, if they're moderated, you would have to uh, look at for these open-ended ones, you'd have to actually look at it before it go go live and everyone would be able to see it. Uh, sensor profanity, uh, the responses, block responses Aww. with profanity. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Ryan, I have a question. Yeah. So, instructor is interested in using this, do we send them to you? It's not yes. just a login, but they want to learn how to use it and the yeah. options. Or now you're going to have this video, so we can share. Yeah, so there is uh, an email we tend to send them and we direct them to poll everywhere and we also offer to meet with them as well. So there are uh, some instructions on how it works. There's an educator guide from poll everywhere. Uh, there's a bunch of videos on sort of how to get started. Uh, there's a few uh, tips that we'll, we'll look at. So this is uh, uh, changing your web link because it gives you just some god awful one like that Ryan K. I just changed that. It took a second, but normally it gave like Ryan Kuhn 85734, which is a little harder to get to. Uh, the default number is still American, uh, and then how to sort of embed the polls in the PowerPoint, and then it talks about tracking and participation and what to tell the students and, and how it looks. We'll be adding more information here, but most people just get in and start playing. It's pretty intuitive, and then when people run into questions, they, they tend to, to, to contact us. Uh, you can test it out from here. Um, Activate this poll. Uh, so you can run the whole thing from the website if you like. Um, you don't have to be logged into PowerPoint. You can just log onto the web and, and then. Um, so there you go. So you can run the whole thing from the website. You don't have to put it into PowerPoint. Some people prefer keeping it separate. Uh, let's see. So you can change a whole host of things, all sorts of different colors, background images. Um, you can customize it. We might set the default slide to be a bit more Carlton-y, but for now we're just keeping it as bland as possible. Um, nice and hospital green. <laughs> we talked about that earlier today. Okay, so back here, make a new poll. Um, multiple choice questions, so example. Create that. You can add images here as well if you want. This is where you'd add an image or you can delete a response over on the right here. Uh, you can add it to a specific group while you're creating it. Um, so you can group them by classes or you group them by class or by topic. Create. Okay, and then I can make that active and then people can 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 answer it if they want. Uh, you can also jump from slide to slide jump left to right. Um, uh, 
Oh, you can start a timer. I didn't even know that was there. Oh, that, I, I'll tell you, I experimented with that once, and it is the most annoying thing. <laughs> <laughs> it stresses the students out, yeah. especially if they see a clock ticking down. I stopped using it many, many years ago. <laughs> so everyone's right. It's Mount Kenya. Go figure. Is there such a mountain as Mount Kenya? Yeah. I thought it was Kilimanjaro. Not okay. Kenya. I wanted to say Kilimanjaro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, maybe you might yeah. See, I needed to make a better... I failed geography in uh, I should have made a better distractor. I should have put Kilimanjaro in there. And Mary Styles is going to check and keep me honest. That's good. <laughs> is that what you're doing? <laughs> That's good. Again. That's good. That's good. Again. Uh, good. We're co-opting. We're co I learned something new today. Ryan, you, you mentioned that these things can be imported from spreadsheet. Oh, sorry, that That's correct. Can they be exported to spreadsheet as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's go back here. Let's say. Is that a monkey? Ryan's actually been there. Ryan's actually been there. The second highest amount There is a way. So, what's your takeaway for today? That. I'm going to Kenya. <laughs> <Someone else. laughs> maybe, maybe not yet. I'll have to. I'll have to take a closer look. Sure, they just, no they problem. just added this last week. This import tool. Um, oh, they do have a template, though. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that will probably yeah. serve my purposes. I would have solved. Do you think you could get the symbols you need in that way? I, I'm not sure. No, it's a it's a display issue. It's yeah, just not it's because there's a there's a, a, a latex tag that is uh, overridden by an HTML tag. So yeah, so you can share polls uh, with a colleague uh, or with a group of colleagues. If you're if you're co-teaching, you can also um, uh, copy the polls uh, to another user or to another uh, topic or section or area. Um, you can run reports. Uh, so let's generate a report here. So there's an executive summary, survey results, uh, response pivot table, um, participant response history, a gradebook, and a segmentation. So let's just go with an executive summary and we'll look at um, the slides from, from today here. So let's select the topic or the uh, category, say finish. And it's going to generate uh, a report for us with how many people responded to, to what. And then you can customize customize this as well or um, run a few. You can run last year's compared to this year or both. Um, you can decide to uh, turn off certain, certain things like engagement or response totals or the correct answer. But... Uh, And then you can download it as a uh, print it as a PDF or download it as a CSV to get all the information back out. And there, there's a number of different types of reports. They all do something uh, a, a little different. Uh, right. Yeah. So do you have to make all these questions beforehand? Uh, no. So. You can, you can do it in real time yeah. Well. So you can make a new one right here. You can make a new poll. They see that as you do it. They'd see that as you do it. Ideally, you're not going to tell them which one's right at that time. Okay. But uh, a, a great point. You really want to be responsive to what they're they're talking about in class. So it's it's very quick and easy to sort of make another uh, slide in class and then and then yeah, pull the lines. Yeah. So and Ryan, you yep. select the active poll, right? You have a list of polls, and then there's this icon. Yeah. So if you're ever showing it. Um, so if you're on the website, you would have to actually activate a poll mm -hmm. and, and make it the active, make it the active oh, poll. Okay. But if you're using PowerPoint or any other slideshow, the second that I actually go into slideshow oh, mode, okay. it, it makes it the, the active slide. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, let's see, where do we go here? So let's look at best practices for a second. Uh, so running out of time, then we can look at a bunch of different ways to. Uh... Okay, so seven is is uh, seven is sections of best practices. 
So learn how to use a tool. Obviously, the more comfortable you are with it, uh, just like using any other technology in front of the students, uh, anytime something goes wrong, it, it's probably going to go wrong. Uh, so just roll with it, be okay with it, tell the students why you're doing it, keep them informed. Uh, learn how to design successful polls, and if you need help with that, there's people here that can help you. So if you're not sure uh, how best to use the tool for, for your uh, discipline, there's, there's lots of other instructors, a lot of other institutions using similar tools, so um, there's actually uh, some, some pretty good user groups for, for different disciplines out there. Uh, allow time to design these interactions, it does take a little bit of time to, to sort of make these. Uh, test stuff out before doing it live in class. I'm happy to meet you in your specific class and we can give it a little test run. Uh, I can even find out when the class will be empty for you. Uh, polls and goals. So again, explain why this is important to students. Uh, make students part of the process. Ask them if they're enjoying this. Ask them if they like it. Uh, one big way to get the buy-in is, you know, if you're doing these for sort of contingent teaching or, or understanding of, of the students are, are, are getting the concept, some of those questions might show up uh, in, in the midterm. You can even have them uh, in the open poll suggest new questions uh, that might be asked. Um, make very clear whether it's being graded or not uh, and avoid high stakes assessments. So there's somebody uh, I was talking to last semester that wanted to do their midterm like this and it's worth 50% and they said you know maybe this isn't the best way because it's very rigid, rigid and structured and timed and then you might be better off with something like a, 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 a if they're all multiple choice you might be better off with something that's uh, like a scan sheet that, that doesn't have as much uh, time pressure because everyone takes a little bit of time difference. Uh, and it's not, don't, don't use it just for attendance. Uh, if you're going to be using the tool, try to use it for anything else as well. Um, uh, again, by all means, for participation, for, for, for assessment, for getting them to answer questions, but don't use it just for attendance. And Keep it simple. Uh, Brian, yeah. the issue of attendance, for example, let's yeah. say you want to do that. Um, they know that you do this at the beginning of your class. They don't have to be there. They can just text you from home. From, from home. home. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And they attend it, no? Huh? Yep. That's okay. right. Yep. So well, that's why you're better to ask them a question. Yes. You yep. know, like, and then. Yeah. You can also then, tie it to something that's on the slide projector. So yeah. if they're if they're yeah. dialing in, they can. Yeah, but they'll be texting our friends. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So if I log in, I would it's see. Me. If I log in yeah. instead of texting, yep. do I see where they are? Your yeah. question. Yes, so if you're sitting at Ryan K and nothing's active, the last slide will potentially be... But I see it here, right? Yeah, the last yeah. slide is active. I could so be outside and answer yeah. questions from the computer. Yeah. I could yeah. turn it off or I could, I could lock it, but yes, uh, like, uh, like you were saying here, you might want to tie it to something, you know, the word today is buffalo, click buffalo or something like that, right? So, uh, let's get rid of that. So keep them easy to read, easy to understand, just like any other multiple choice questions. Don't use double negatives. Uh, if you're going to have, uh, try and keep the stem positive, and if you're going to keep it negative, put the negative near the end of the, the, the sentence. So um, there, we have a handout on making multiple choice questions, and there's a few things just to, to avoid to make it as clear as possible. So no, don't do what Donnie don't does. What should Donnie do? And then <laughs> so don't, don't confuse them. Uh, 10 to 15 seconds aimed at 20, 30 words. You want to have time to students to, to think about it and then respond. Uh, depending on the questions, they might have to do some calculation or something else, so it's going to change for everybody. But don't wait for every single person to respond. Just kind of, you can set the default to be the count and then you can uh, figure out how many people have actually responded. Timing. Interweave the questions throughout your presentation. Um, be consistent using them throughout the term. Um, rule of thumb is, is every 10 to 20 minutes. Some people, everyone does it a bit differently. Uh, some people will teach for half the class uh, and then do sort of a, a review of what happened um, and take a break or something or, or uh, do, do five or ten questions at the end of class. Some people do it at the beginning of class to see if students actually did their homework or understand the material from last class. Um, and if they didn't, they it sort of reaffirmed some of the, the information
information that they, they might need to understand this class. So uh, th there's, a, there's a bunch of, of different benefits. Be consistent throughout the term as much as, as, much as possible. So um, a lot of complaints that we've had before is, you know, students, especially these things where students have to pay a lot of money, is like, I bought this, my instructor used it for the first class, and then the eighth class, and I lugged it all around the entire semester, spent a lot of money for it, and the person didn't use it. Um, it's a little bit different because it's free and there are probably other phone on them anyways, but uh, just, just be consistent <clears throat> and don't try to overuse it. Uh, some people do uh, review sessions at the, at the end of the year before a midterm or before, before an exam, so it's a quick way to, to sort of get the students familiar with the type of questions that they're going to be seeing. Again, formative assessment, you give them a chance to, to get something wrong before you're actually going to see if they understand the content. Response is, avoid jumping to show the correct answer. Um, you can talk about the correct answer, so I could have left those up and said, you know, why, why do people pick scissors? Why, why do you think scissors is the best answer? We can have a discussion about, about scissors and how weak paper is. Um, and then you can lead the, the, the students to their, 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 uh, through an exercise, show them what people responded, and then, and then take another poll, let's say. Depending on what you're doing, putting in a, a not sure option lets the student still participate, uh, but it avoids guessing. So if you're looking for uh, validity uh, of what uh, of the information, it really depends on the type of questions you're answering or, or asking. Sometimes you really want students to commit to an answer for them to realize that, oh, poop, I, I got this wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about. Because, uh, again, it just lets students have a bit of a reality check. A lot of times, if you ask a question in class, you see a lot of blank faces, the student's like, oh, yeah, I knew that. But they probably they might not have actually known that that was the correct answer. So this sort of makes them put their money where their mouth is. Uh, but depending on, on sort of the uh, analytics you're hoping to get back, you might, you might want to put a not sure option. Opinions and feelings. So not every question has to be a test question uh, or with a right or wrong answer you could be asking for opinions uh, for, for all sorts of different reasons whether you're starting a discussion or, or seeing how people's uh, opinions about something change before and, and after you have a lecture on it um, and then talk to the students about the, the responses don't just be like oh yep that's good bye so why did people think this you can you can pull uh, ideas out of the class and, and tease out some of the misconceptions students are having by addressing the why did people choose these other answers. Uh, consider keeping it anonymous, we talked about that. Uh, use spontaneous polls, uh, as you mentioned, to, to keep, uh, keep polls based on what's, class, uh, what, what's happening in class um, and enhance student-to-student -student interaction. So um, I tried to find more stuff about peer interactions, but any sort of peer interaction that you already do in class, um, this is just a way to sort of get a summary instead of having everybody report back. Uh, so we already had a look. Was there something that I mentioned? Okay, so download the free app. It's already installed in every class. You still do have to log in though, otherwise your, your slides aren't going to actually show up. So if you, when you're in class, you open up PowerPoint, you still have to click on that PowerPoint uh, ribbon option and log in. Uh, changing your, oh, I didn't look up changing the web link and where that stuff is. So let's hop back in here. In my account, I can go to Ryan K. Let me make this bigger so we can see it. Maybe a little smaller. Oh, okay, I'll click on settings. So this is where you change your response. You can start typing something in and, and see if it's available. Okay. Uh, it'll, it'll tell you right away. Uh, international text messaging. You'll want to go and choose Canada. You can choose a ten-digit or a uh, or the five-digit number. And so everybody's thirty-seven six zero seven. No, that's just that's, that's just, just me. That's just for okay. me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, labs. I've never seen this before. New poll creator. Poll sorting. Boring mode. It's in the development. Uh, Sides. So yeah. Weighted grading. Hmm. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, response history of specific people. Uh, let's have a look. You can look at the participants. Uh, so this is where you go and, and make a group. Um, and then you can see who's in, in what group, or you can just look at a, a specific group. Um, Brian, not discounting the, yeah. the, the point you've made about anonymity here, but is there a way to make a question um, reject answers that are coming from 
people that are not logged in. Yep. So let's have a look here. Let's hop into any yeah, we saw that as a uh, as an option earlier. Yeah. So response settings. So registered participants yeah. only. Okay. Does so, but uh, so if they if they're not logged in, will it respond to them? And like if they try to text it, will they be notified that they're not logged in? Let's find out. So uh, register participants only. Let's make this active. And let's clear the results and unlock it. Yeah, Ryan yeah. requires that you register before you participate. There you go. Okay. And so let me. Can I just try the text one? Yeah. Sure. Wow. Ideally, if you're going to use this to track participation, there's a whole procedure that you'd want to go through to get. You, you make a, a group for your class, you have students click the link, and then it, it, it adds them into the group for the class. And so that. Uh, if they're going to be texting, they need to put in their phone number. Ideally, uh, it, it just makes them make a, uh, an account on, on Poll Everywhere where they put their name, their email address, and, and so that you can identify them. So uh, in the future, potentially, it'll, like they could still use you know, pink teddy bear 34 at Gmail. So it's like, okay, what student is this? It's going to be hard to, to, to figure yeah. out who that student is. So in the future, the integration with the learning management system might be better so we can say, okay, that person's email is actually this person. So we so ask them. You can uh, you can ask them, but students always don't always and do what you. Can the registration be different for every week? Like you can give them a, a code so they can in, get in. Um, sorry, I'm not understanding. So ideally, yeah, they only that, they register. That the students who are actually answering the code, they are in the classroom, not anywhere in the world. Yeah. So. Uh, can you say, well, this you can register with this password today and a different password. Yeah, so you just have your first question be, you know, what's today's password? But again, students could text it to somebody else uh, as well, or they could have two devices up, logged down, it's like you have my phone and my laptop, or... Yeah, the two devices is another thing. As of December, we had 95 active instructors, uh, so people that have made a poll in the last uh, 12 months. Uh, there's been about 40 or so people since, since January that have asked to be added onto the Carleton account, but I haven't went and looked specifically about how many people are, uh, are, are using, using the tool right now. So Ryan, are instructors using clickers anymore or not? There are definitely still some instructors that are using clickers. Um, it doesn't work on the, the on the consoles. You can you can use the clickers. There's something called Turning Point Light. It sits on top of everything else, uh, and you can just basically ask A, B, C, or D, and then you get responses. It doesn't track participants. Uh, there are a few instructors still using their their laptops that haven't been updated to the latest version, so they can still run the old version of Turning Point and track participation. Um, but we are are. are not supporting it or recommending it anymore yeah. um, right. internally. Uh, the, the price has just got too prohibitive. It was great. Um, well, we have two or three minutes left. Uh, a couple different ways people are using this, things that we mostly talked about. So uh, there's preparation. So are they ready for class? Have they done their homework? Are they able to recall material from, from previous classes? Uh, you can probe pre-existing materials. Maybe it's the first day you're teaching the, this class. Okay, what did they actually learn in the, the prerequisite class for this and what did they remember? Uh, again, facilitating teamwork, interaction, collect votes from a debate, require uh, interaction from peers, uh, start or focus a discussion, formative assessment. Again, we want to give them time to trip and fall and make mistakes so that they can, uh, they can actually learn because that's where the learning happens. Uh, reveal misunderstandings that are happening in class, uh, able to apply material to new situations. Uh, as a check-in, are they, are they paying attention? So is it, uh, you know, again, everyone was like engagement, engagement, engagement. So this is just another tool to try to change the modality of your teaching um, and get students to, to, to sort of snap back in. So I could ask something about the, the notes specifically. So are they taking good notes or, or do they remember what you said? Uh, are they preparing for, for the class or labs? Are they keeping up for their homework? Are they actively thinking in the class? Or are they just sort of passively copying things down and not really engaged in, in the thought process in the class? You gotta be careful with that one. Some people take a little bit longer to sort of process new material though. Uh, so we'll review at the end of the lecture see what's going on. Yeah, it's just a sample implementation. So choose a learning goal, develop uh, an open-ended um, 
example, these groups to answer it, listen carefully for misconceptions and address them. That, uh, that's everything I had to say. Any more questions, comments, concerns, accusations? <laughs> <laughs> Threats? No? Uh, Ryan, you said you had a, there was a multiple choice question handout. Is that yeah, I will email that to everybody as well, and what I'll, I'll put it on the uh, the website too.